We're back with Dylan the Madman Victor in Joburg. This USN ambassador demonstrates extreme acts of gravity defiance. Today we chat to him about how to get started in this extreme sport and find out what fuels this daredevil when it comes to nutrition. The sport of mountain biking is really easy. All you need to do is get on a bike, go to a bike park, your local bike park, where it's safe, jump on and go right. That's all you need to do. Now, when you want to get into the trials or the tricks, I'd recommend riding for a couple of months first, get comfortable on the bike and then start small. All you need to start on is a curb or a, or a, a, the smallest rock or a log you've got lying in your garden and just try and ride over it. And that's the start of trials. That's how easy it is to get started. The outdoor sport is basically sort of comes from the normal mountain biking. And um, back in the old days when we just started, we used to ride standard mountain bikes, but now the bikes have become very specialized. There's no more seats, there's no more gears, no more suspension. And you're basically riding on just the bare essentials that you need to get over the rocks and things like that. It wasn't until the late 1970s that road bicycle companies started to manufacture mountain bicycles using high-tech lightweight materials. This sport has a small but dedicated following. And people say, you're an adrenaline junkie. I don't actually think that I am. I think it's more a precision thing. I'm addicted to the goals and the achieving of the goals and overcoming things in front of you. Getting over a rail, getting over a, a step or a ledge or, or bunny hopping a couple of centimeters higher. You know, whatever you're going to do, that's what I'm addicted to. I mean, for doing the technical things, you know, getting right what I really want to get right. The, the small, the difficult, that type of thing. A lot of the stuff I practice on is really low on the ground. And if you make a mistake, you're not really going to get hurt. Dylan performs in about 150 odd shows a year. And when he's not performing, he coaches the current South African champion, Karin van Jarsveld. I'm quite scared of heights. A lot of people say to me, how can you be scared of heights when you're jumping on anything? What's funny is I feel more comfortable riding my bike high up than what I do on my feet, which is kind of a weird thing. I fall at the moment probably three or four times every time I go riding my bike, you know. But I think what actually happens is the more you fall, you get better at falling. Obviously you're trying things that you, you don't always get right. So you jump off the bike and you're on top of a wall, where do you go to, you know. But you learn to, you know, stop, drop, roll. The nature of the sport is to try difficult stuff and to try and ride over things that you ordinarily wouldn't be able to. So when you're trying something new, maybe get it right one out of 10 and then two out of 10, three out of 10, eventually when you can get it 10 out of 10 times right, then you've conquered that obstacle. A good nutrition regime is critical during training and shows. With a lifestyle as demanding as this, it is necessary to keep your body fueled up with the energy it needs to perform and recover. Yeah, I don't like to tell people about it because it's sort of keep it as my little secret, but I suppose people are starting to know about it, is the VO2 max. I can see a remarkable difference. In the shows, you know, I talk my whole way through my shows. I do my own commentating. And if you can imagine putting your heart rate up to max and then having to talk the whole time, that's how hard it is. Now what VO2 max does is it just gives you that little bit extra in your lungs. And it, it just helps you. It, it calms me in the show. I can get through the show much, much easier. When I take VO2 max, I can feel the difference straight up. I also like to use Saito Power. You can also go with your anabolic nitro. And that really gives you a boost, especially in the later part of the show. You know, I actually sometimes think that it's got a tacky in that bottle because it's a lot of scorp, you know. Dylan fine-tuned his nutritional strategy over many races. Training is the ideal time to really experiment with what works for you and to get used to eating and refueling regularly. The supplements are crucial to my lifestyle. What I do on the bike, it's a lot of impact hard on the joints, so I really use joint plex a lot. I use multiplex as a multivitamin, which is a, a really a good supplement. I always feel it helps for me. But then also to get rid of the, the hunger cravings, the meal replacements are very, very, very good, and I, I stick to that. And also it's a good way to keep slim. You know? When you're eating a lot, when you've trained, you're hungry. Now you, you want to fill your stomach, and a meal replacement is a good way to do that without uh, picking up too much weight. Dylan's eating plan is built of plenty of low-fat, high-carbohydrate foods to provide energy, fluids to offer hydration and quality nutritional supplements hand-picked for his unique needs. Every single one of my shows, I usually to the volunteers, the guys that I jump over, I always give out six spikes. So he's a favorite, you know, the guys kind of love it and uh, they've got to know all the flavors. A lot of guys come to me and say, oh, don't you rather have a, a sugar-free or a twist or a original thing? A lot of the guys, you know, that lie down really appreciate it. Obviously they've just had an adrenaline rush having a bicycle almost fall on top of them and uh, to end it off with a spark always puts a smile on their face. So yeah, it's something nice to do. Another thing Dylan is famous for is his apparently never ending wheelies. He plans to improve his own record of 20 kilometers by wheeling an astounding 94.7 kilometers. Tune in again on Monday to meet another inspiring sports hero and in the meantime, join the USN SA page on Facebook.